Thousands of people come to enjoy the beautiful outdoors at Town Common. Some say building a cultural center here would block the scenic views. Every object, every picture, and every landmark of Oriental can be documented through a story. But all of those stories come down to one woman, Miss Fay, Oriental's living treasure. Nobody is on the road today. There has been a travel ban completely in the Northeast. So make sure that you stop, stay at home, and be safe. From the Case Art Barton Galleries, this is Luisa Torres reporting for WEDT. Residents of Wilson, North Carolina and the surrounding areas came to one of the series of meetings today to address the future plans for the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. The pipeline will cover about a 12-mile stretch along Wilson County alone. Many residents are worried that the pipeline that will run from West Virginia down to North Carolina could cause a burden on landowners. Joe Polland, a resident and landowner, says some locals have some concerns. The community is against it. They have all signed a petition against it and that has been sent in. Whether or not that will accomplish any good, I don't know. A partnership between four U.S. energy companies are proposing the pipeline project for 2018. This includes Duke Energy in North Carolina and Dominion Power in Virginia. According to the Dominion website, the pipeline will be about 600 miles long and the estimated investment cost is about $4.5 billion to $5 billion. Some believe that the natural gas line will create revenue and economic growth in our state. Dominion Power said that the project could create about 50,000 jobs, but groups with dissenting opinions believe the environmental impacts of this project could cause detrimental consequences to farmland and natural resources. Others simply oppose the pipeline because of the implications of imminent domain. Lawyer Charles Lawler says the decision could affect residents permanently. But this isn't a free market when you've got uh, a quasi-monopoly like electrical uh, and gas companies with the power of eminent domain to acquire easements through private property of individuals that get one opportunity to be compensated for their, their, being, for their land being encumbered. The meeting took place at Forest Hills Middle School and community members had an opportunity to speak with representatives of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline on an individual basis. There will be more hearings throughout the state and the timeline for the project is set to start construction next year. As you can see, the meeting at Forest Hills Middle School has created strong reactions between community members in opposition and in favor of the pipeline. This is Luisa Torres reporting for WEDT. Rain or shine, people wait to enter the 9-11 Memorial Museum. This museum opened May of 2014. Not only is it a historic landmark, but it serves as a place of remembrance and reflection. Upon entering the museum, visitors walk on the path of a descending ramp. Along the way, there are many photographs and displays that show the timeline of events as they happened on September 11, 2001. Senior journalism major Taylor Baker says how experiencing the museum left a strong impact and a lasting reflection on her. It showed me how Americans can come together and overcome a tragedy and like it empowered like us as a nation to get stronger and to like support each other and to like just showing what happens in the face of tragedy, you know. It just kind of showed me that if something else was to ever happen again, we would rise up once again and we would help each other. After walking the descending ramp, visitors enter Foundation Hall. This is where the only remaining column of the World Trade Center towers still stands. The Historical Museum and the Memorial Museum are both built on the foundations of the World Trade Center towers that were destroyed during the 9-11 attacks. The exhibitions include many artifacts, artwork, and displays using animation and projections to depict many personal stories during the attacks. One can see the remainder of the Vesey Street Steps. Hundreds of people were able to flee using those same steps. A large blue mosaic that has many tiles, each a different shade of blue, represents the people that died during 9-11. Also, collections of surviving artifacts are displayed in most galleries. Many patrons visit to remember and pay tribute to those who lost their lives on September 11th. People also notice and honor the efforts of rescue officers, policemen, firefighters, and EMS workers, as well as many volunteers. Here, visitors can personally face and recall the tragic events that took place. 
The museum has more than 10,000 artifacts. Some of the featured artifacts focus on the happenings right after 9-11. One of the main messages conveyed by the museum is a reflection on the events of 9-11 and how they changed and impacted a nation forever. Yet the most interesting thing about the museum is how it still manages to celebrate how the U.S. can rise again after such a catastrophic event. This is Luisa Torres reporting from New York City for the 9-11. The race starts here, at the bell tower. At this race, some people decide to run, while others prefer to walk, but each one of them comes to give. This afternoon in Wilson, North Carolina, several students, faculty, and staff at Barton College joined in their first ever color run. The Barton College Student Government Association collects money from the event to donate towards meals for the nonprofit Rise Against Hunger, formerly known as Stop Hunger Now. Every participant is given a white t-shirt to run the 5K course. Colorful arrows direct the runners along the path, and throughout the run, student volunteers throw an array of colors into the air as runners take the course. At the end of the color run, prizes were given to the top three male and female contenders. According to Jared Tice, Dean of Students, this is the first of several events in support of Rise Against Hunger. I amazingly won first place, which is the first time I've ever won any sporting event in my life, I feel like. And uh, it was a lot of fun, but the most important thing instead of winning was that the money raised goes to the nonprofit Rise Against Hunger. T. Amber Neal and Hannah Teasley, both college seniors and student athletes, chose to take part in the 5K. I just encourage more people to do it next time because it's actually really fun and it goes towards a great cause. Yeah, it goes towards a great cause and it's something to do if you want to be active in campus. It brings people in and keeps them here so yeah at the end of the race runners were able to have a bit of fun with a ready set go they created what looked like a colorful cloud yeah, just seeing everyone have fun and being able to run with friends and have the little talk too tice the dean of students and the winner of the race hopes this color run will become one of the new highly anticipated events on campus i'm hoping we grow it every year and this becomes one of the new barton traditions like paint wars or the packaging event itself for rise against hunger um, so yeah i hope we continue this tradition here at the college the next goal for sga is to raise seventy five hundred dollars and package twenty five thousand meals for rise against hunger Signing off, this is Luisa Torres reporting.